Hello everyone, it's so good to have you here. We are Emily and Travis and we live in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. So if it's your first time here, welcome. Welcome to our humble abode and please make yourself at home. As you can see, seasons are changing and fall is upon us. As we are approaching the end of September, it is getting colder outside and the days are shorter. So as the cold temperature is coming in, we find ourselves spending more time inside, making warming food and even cozying in bed in the morning. As we are slowing down and turning ourselves inward, we make sure to continue to find joy in simple daily activities like greening the firewood inside the house, cooking good food, walking outside, or simply breathing the fresh mountain air. These activities, made with awareness, can really be soothing for the body and soul. Overall, we think that joy is all about being present and having gratitude for what we already have. So Travis made a magnificent Indian doll and we sneaked in some amaranth leaves and also curly duck and this is something we're going to bring at a friend's house because we have a gathering, a meditation gathering tonight. We're wishing to share that with everyone. We also have some delicious Indian pickle to put with that, to eat with it. How is it? It is fabulous. I am, I've been craving this for a couple of weeks now and uh, it's always a labor of love. I so enjoy it. Something I've been making for about 20 years. Comes from an ancient Ayurvedic recipe from uh, Dr. Pankaj Naram, who's no longer with us, but is a very loving, loving being. Um, so it's always a joy and a pleasure for me to eat this. Mm. It's like a flavor explosion. Yeah. And it's one of your favorite dish, right? It's one of my favorite. You yes. can't, you could literally live off of that. 
I could. <laughs> <laughs> this and maybe a smoothie, a morning smoothie. Yep. <laughs> Celery juice too. Celery juice too. Oh, it looks yummy. So this is our Grenilla honey that we are straining. So we've been infusing it for about a month. And right now I'm straining the honey. So the only thing left is beautiful creamy honey with a Grenilla taste. Grenilla is a flower that has some sap in the buds. So we extract the buds by infusing it. And it's an expectorant, it's very good when you have a sore throat, it's amazing in taste also. So that's the natural medicine from our yard. What's happening? No. <laughs> Are you studying Spanish and then you make mistakes? No. <laughs> you fucking damn it, thing, okay? <laughs>
So we'll go see the the new Lepiota spot that we found and see how much they have grown because I haven't come here for two days now and we had a big rain. Maybe three days even. So let's see where they are because they're hidden in the grass here. Oh, there it is. These are these little beauties that we saw the other day. They got so much bigger and much more. There's a little family there. See that? Five of them. And I keep on searching because you never know what you find when you dig a little bit. Sometimes worms find them before us. And I decided to leave these small ones because, you know, they're all, they're still like very little and I will come back tomorrow. We'll come back tomorrow to see where they're at, but I would think that tomorrow we'll, we'll gather them so we get a little bit more volume. So we got some yarrow, which is a medicinal herb. It's very good for your, your sinuses and plenty of other property that I had to look up because I don't remember right now. But also we got some bottom mushrooms. It's some kind of agaricus. It's in the family of bottom mushrooms and so many lepiotas that I actually had to go home and get another basket because this one is just too full. But isn't it pretty? Like, isn't it amazing what Mother Nature can offer? Offer and provide? This is fantastic. This is probably four pounds of food and it's freshly foraged. It is free. We call it our yard and actually when we come in our, <laughs> in, in, in our yard to forage, we call it our yard because we get so many things just from our yard. Wild plants, wild mushrooms, wild berries. Just, it's just growing by itself. We didn't plant anything. So yeah, lots of work in dehydrating all that today, but also worth it.
So at the base of this duck, this is either a yellow duck, curly duck, cannot identify them, but it's a duck. Spacey. Rumex Spacey. And uh, this is what grows in September at the base of it. It also grows like this at springtime, which we always forage a lot. And then they shoot those long stalk up, which produce some seeds for production. But right now they're regrowing. So we're gonna get more of these beauties. They're not perfect. They have holes in them, but we will use them in recipes, like cook recipes where we would use spinach. And it totally works. It's very good. So this is what we've got for the day. It's probably something like five pounds, maybe five and a half pounds with some duck leaves, dandelion leaves, some meadow mushrooms, agaricus mushrooms, and some yarrow. I'm um, always out of breath because in altitude, the oxygen is very thin. So it's been a beautiful week here in Colorado. It's actually really we're on the brink of autumn so the leaves are falling everywhere and we're starting to have some wind which is kind of a sign that we're going towards the colder season because here when the wind starts coming in since we are in the mountain it's very powerful and that's something that it's quite humbling, I would say, because when the wind starts coming in, sometimes it, it lasts for like 24 hours and it's hitting the house with like big gusts and it's shaking the walls and everything. It's almost It shakes hard. the house, yeah it's, yeah. it's woken us up out of the sleep, <laughs> so. Yeah, almost hard to, to sleep, actually. So that's kind of a sign that autumn is there, that fall is there, right? Yeah. It's interesting because it's, cold at night and we have to light up the, the wood stove in the morning but then during the day we can still spend time outside in t-shirt just enjoying the sun uh, we still have some work to do with cutting wood because it's never enough yeah we have quite a bit more wood to get uh, stocked up for the winter time and as Emily was saying the uh, you know because of the uh, 8,000 feet elevation that we're at or 2,700 meters depending on where you're at um, the uh, the sun is so intense that you know we can be outside in t-shirts and you know 50 55 degrees very comfortably uh, so uh, it's 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 an interesting transition of seasons where we're going from having a fire at night to being outside in a t-shirt during the day but you know it's it's enjoyable 
Yeah, it's but it allows the house to stay warm also because I mean it's not cold, cold, cold yet, and I think there's a wave of heat that is actually coming for the next two weeks. Uh, so we will get back to almost summer summer temperature. Let's see. That's what I saw in the forecast. Uh, but right now in the morning, just to be cozy, you know, because we don't want to put the heater on. So we just use our wood that we've been spending so much time cutting. And uh, and also it just feels good. <laughs> it's cozy. Mm -hmm. I love fire in the wood stove, really. But yeah, so we're talking about the wind. It's really a sign of what is to come. And it's reverberating when it happens. And at the same time, when it's very strong, I don't. it's not the best idea to go walk in the forest. It can be dangerous in the forest with 60 to 80 mile an hour winds, and that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. I don't know what that is in kilometers an hour, but... I'll do the translation <laughs> <laughs> for our European friends or our Canadian friends, uh, for, for our friends from anywhere in the world, actually. <laughs> because this is, we use miles only here. Right, <laughs> right. And for a night. Yeah, so it's been interesting to look at the to observe the change of season and just to kind of go with that flow. You know, fall is harvest season. It's it's also time to be able to begin to be introspective and observe what we've learned and experienced from the spring and the summertime. Um, you know, I, I tend to hibernate a little bit in the wintertime. So, you know, it's that time for me to return back to uh, the interior of myself and spend a little bit more time indoors and you know, begin to study other things since we're not outside adventuring all of the time or foraging all the time. Um, so, yeah, I actually enjoy the, the change of the seasons. Mm, yes. So thank you all for being here with us. Thanks for the comments, the likes, and uh, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe because we have much more content to come. Yes, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. you all yeah. and love you all. Love you all. Be well. Take care. Take care. As you can see, our lifestyle is simple. We love to say that less is more and that time is our most valuable asset as we cannot buy it, neither can we exchange it. So we make sure to appreciate what we already have. Both Travis and I could speak about our past and how busy we used to be. So transitioning to a simpler way of living has required transforming our priorities, reducing our material possessions, designing an affordable and enjoyable lifestyle, and finding new passions that give us joy and energy and that do not require spending a lot of money on things. It has required also letting go of all comparison with the outside world as we are all unique and nobody but ourselves truly knows how we should live our lives. So here are some homemade tomato toast with with homemade bread tomatoes from our friend's garden homemade alfalfa and some spinach and a jalapeno that is quite strong from our friend's garden also yummy
Okay, so you close your eyes and I'm going to put in your hand something I found I think you'll be very happy with. Hold on. Oops. You can try to guess what it is. You think it's love? <laughs> yeah, well, love, you see it every day. But it's made out of love from nature. Okay, are we done? <laughs> it's difficult when one hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oysters? Yeah, oysters. Oh yeah. <laughs> Smell mm, good. Beautiful. Yeah, we don't find these often. It's no. just a, it was on a dead aspen. We only had a couple this year so far. Yeah, when I saw that, I was on the way out. Beautiful. So we're going to use this mushroom tonight in our dish. We're making a pilaf rice because we have rice that we need to use that is already cooked. And uh, I think oyster will be an amazing addition to it. And we will also take the little puff balls because we have four of them. And these will eat more like tomorrow with the other big ones. So we will also be using these duck leaves that we foraged two days ago. So here is the final result. Garnish with uh, some lemon juice, some cilantro that I've, uh, we have already stirred in, and some roasted cashews. It's much better. So it's a carrot pilaf. With oyster, red bell peppers, cauliflower, some jalapeno from our friend's garden, and uh, zucchini, summer squash. And I have the best wife ever because she pan roasted fresh cashews for my dish, which I'm so grateful for. Delicious. Mm. some Indian pickles. <laughs>